what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here we're gonna be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about thanksgiving 2 i know what you did last summer and we'll talk about scream 7 so starting off here with thanksgiving 2 we got an update from eli roth via indiewire a couple days ago it says next year thanksgiving 2 promises another helping from the renewed or renowned roth and rundell the filmmaker said the sequel is in soft prep now with plans to start shooting at the end of March in 2025. And I guess it's supposed to be coming out later that same year. It won't be a prequel. Several actors are returning and the script is already written. Now they're hammering out the budget, which Roth plans to keep low like last time. He says we're up in the ante, but we are not going to do it with more money. That keeps it tight and lean and mean and forces us to make decisions. There's a lot of setting up that we did in the first one that we don't have to deal with now it can just be all payoff i've come up with the stuff that is going to be a challenge and i want it to be a challenge to pull off because if i've come up with the stuff that i think will make the best kills then i'm going to do it like i'm never going to make another movie again so the enthusiasm and the motivation definitely makes me confident that this could end up being something decent as far as that first thanksgiving film i didn't find it all that bad it wasn't necessarily the greatest thing but it was a pretty decent solid middle of the road slasher film it did have a pretty cool chase scene in the middle though with that one individual who found themselves i think it wasn't stuck in like an oven at one point if i'm remembering correctly it was a pretty intense chase scene so hopefully there's another chase scene in the sequel that lives up to it the stars he's referring to one undoubtedly has to be addison ray's character uh the other surviving final girl patrick dempsey's character since he is spoiler alert john carver and i would imagine they're gonna go like down this i still know what you did last summer route where he's coming back after them all this time later and yeah they'll have to deal with that since he was never caught at the end of the first movie what do you guys think about this i think it does lend itself to the idea that maybe spyglass has been working out something with patrick for scream 7 and thanksgiving considering thanksgiving 2 is supposed to start shooting at the end of march which aligns with what Scream 7 is about to do, shoot from January through March. So Patrick's schedule shouldn't interfere with either film if they have something worked out where he shoots one at the beginning of the year in January and then another one at the end of filming after that wraps with Thanksgiving 2 in March. So we'll see what comes of Thanksgiving 2. Let's talk about I Know What You Did Last Summer 3. So I Know What You Did Last Summer is filming. We're still waiting for Jennifer Love Hewitt to be confirmed, but we did get this cool first look photo yesterday. A lot of you already noticed the outdated monitor in the back. And while I could see this being a hint towards a flashback coming, those monitors should, could just be sitting around in a room that the killer isn't supposed to be in, if I'm being quite honest. I've seen several rooms like that in my time <laughs> where they have these old monitors in them and you're not supposed to be in that room. At the moment, it would appear the new Fisherman is a mixture of A from Pretty Little Liars because it's giving A, Mona, whoever you think of when you hear A, and Ben Willis since we have the iconic hook present. I might do a full length video on the topic, but I want to see what you guys think about an idea like this playing out in the film. What if the accident this time, if you've been following me on Twitter, you know where I'm going. What if the accident is on purpose? It's not an accident by any means, but only the killer knows it was on purpose because they are trying to immortalize themselves by creating their own true crime story in Southport to rival or outdo the legacy of Ben Willis. So as we're watching the movie, the story play out, our protagonists think they actually killed someone and it was their fault. But in the end, we would find out it was just one big step in a long, elaborate scheme to immortalize oneself. In this case, it could be one of their friends. They find out that that person is alive. No one but us and their targets learn this. And the person who we thought to be dead manages to frame someone else for the murders while staying dead in the process and simultaneously exposing what Julian Ray did to Ben Willis all those years ago, explaining their role in it. Because again, the rumored plot details suggest that Ben Willis' legacy has become like this urban legend in town. But it doesn't sound like they know who actually did it. The car accident is just what's known, which I would love to have a full context of if that's actually the case. But I think I see how that could be why Julian Ray are important to the story if someone is trying to outdo what they did all those years ago, but in this case it's on purpose because they want to immortalize themselves and kind of go out with a bang. Similar to, again, if you watch Pretty Little Liars, there was a scene where Allison kind of fantasized about how beautiful it would be or how amazing it would be to die young gruesomely. Maybe this person is doing this because they're a true crime nut. They're just faking their own demise. And then a year later, 
them and an accomplice actually do kill some people, they stay dead in the process and their legacy lives on out sur or surpassing the, the legacy of Ben Willis while simultaneously exposing Julian Ray's secrets. I could see something like that going on. Uh, very Scream 4-esque, but still has a fresh twist to it. Before I get off the topic of I Know What You Did Last Summer 3, shout out to you, Kyler, for sending this my way because this is a big piece of information that we've all stumbled across thanks to this video. But it would appear that Sarah Pigeon is starring in the film possibly as the daughter of Ray and Julie. These are screen caps of footage of them filming in Australia. I will leave a link to the Instagram page that shared this down in the description and in the comment section of the video. But this gives us another indication on how Julie could be significant to the story. Because if you notice, Sarah's character, assuming again, notice how she's hugging Ray, but she's dressed just like how Julie was in that original movie it's clearly a callback so if she's not julie's daughter it's definitely a callback to let us know that ray has a child at least <laughs> if it's not with julie that would be shocking i would ex i would imagine this is ray and julie's daughter so that was a big find and again shout out to you kyler so that's another way we know how julie is going to be significant to the story because her child is seemingly involved in it as well so let's talk about scream 7. celeste o'connor who was in talks according to big screen leaks ended up being confirmed to actually be part of the cast later on during the day reputable trade started backing it up so celeste o'connor has joined the cast like i've stated celeste is either a queen bee character named holly or the heartbreaker of the group chelsea both of which are friends to sydney's daughter taylor celeste does give off queen bee to me so fingers crossed that's the role they managed to secure love their work in freaky did what they could with madam webb I did not see that Ghostbusters film that dropped earlier this year, so let me know how Celeste was in that project. This, again, is the most exciting bit of casting so far to me since Sydney and Gail Weathers returning. That's like expected at this point with a franchise that has had them included in almost every movie. I can compare that to having the same meal every day. Yeah, I'll eat it because it's usually good, but excitement is going to dwindle. <laughs> so Celeste is the most exciting bit of news so far for me. And just for clarity, on my community post from yesterday, minorities have been present in the Scream franchise since the start. The spotlight has just gotten bigger over time with each sequel. Celeste has received backlash already due to their beliefs and other things that people have brought to my attention. All I can say is just let those accounts stay miserable. Celeste doesn't care. A check is coming, and if Celeste won't give it a time of day, we shouldn't either. That's really all I can say on that matter. Celeste is going to do their thing. Hopefully it'll be a positive thing. And whether or not you agree with them signing on or not, that's up to you. I'm just saying going as far as to attack their identity, that's a bit silly. And then also going after their beliefs after what just happened with Melissa. Let's stop that. Has nothing to do with the movie. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and never miss a video. In the description, I have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.